thyroiditis and thyroid cancers. Thyroiditis is inflammation of the thyroid gland and can be acute, subacute, or chronic. Each type of thyroiditis is characterized by inflammation or fibro fibrosis or lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid gland. Several forms of thyroiditis are characterized by an autoimmune damage to the thyroid. The various forms of thyroiditis may cause thyroid toxicosis or hypothyroidism. Acute thyroiditis is a rare disorder caused by infection of the thyroid gland by bacteria, fungi, microbacteria, or parasites. Staph infection is the most common cause. Infection typically causes anterior neck pain and swelling, fever, and dysphagia. Pharyngitis or pharyngeal pain is often present. Examination may re reveal warmth, erythema, and tenderness of the thyroid gland. Treatment of acute thyroiditis includes antimicrobial agents and fluid replacement. Surgical incision and drainage may be needed if an abscess is present. Subacute thyroiditis results from a viral infection of the thyroid gland after a cold or upper respiratory infection. Manifestations include fever, chills, dysphagia, and muscle and joint pain. Pain can radiate to the ears and jaw. The thyroid gland feels hard and enlarged on palpation. Thyroid function can remain normal, although hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism may develop. Chronic thyroiditis, which occurs most frequently in women between the ages of 30 and 50, has been termed Hashimoto's disease or chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. Its diagnosis is based on the hist histolic, um, histologic appearance of the inflamed thyroid gland. In contrast to the acute thyroiditis, the chronic forms are usually not accompanied by pain, pressure symptoms, or fever, and thyroid activity usually is normal or low rather than increased. Cell-mediated immunity may play a significant role in the pathogenesis of chronic thyroiditis and may be a genetic have a genetic predisposition. If untreated, the disease runs a slow, progressive course, leading eventually to hypothyroidism. Hashimoto's disease is also called juvenile autoimmune thyroiditis. It's the most common cause of thyroid disease in children, with the largest percentage of juvenile hypothyroidism. It's most frequent after the age of six and peaks in adolescence can be self-limiting. There is often a presence of goiter and uh, elevated thyroglobulin antibody, which is found through further diagnostic workup. Signs and symptoms of lymphocytic thyroiditis includes an enlarged thyroid, usually asymmetric, firm, freely movable, non-tender, and painless. Often there's tracheal compression or a sense of fullness, hoarseness, or dysphagia as complained by the patient. You can have hyperthyroidism, which would be evident by nervousness, irritability, increased sweating, hyperactivity. The TSH would be slightly or moderately elevated with progressive disease. And the T4 decreases, followed by a decrease in T3 and an increase in your TSH. Treatment includes oral administration of thyroid hormone, which will decrease the goiter and provides feedback to suppress the thyroid stimulating hormone. Surgery is not indicated. Interferon, interleukin, amiodarone, and lithium can trigger painless thyroiditis as they interfere with the body's immune response. There's been a correlation found with lymphocytic thyroiditis and low vitamin D levels. Cancer of the thyroid is much less prevalent than other forms of cancer. However, it accounts for 90% of endocrine malignancies. According to the American Cancer Society, there are an estimated 25,000 new cases of thyroid cancer diagnosed each year. There are several types of cancer of the thyroid gland. The type determines the course and um, prognosis. External radiation of the head, neck, or chest in infancy and childhood increases the risk for child or for thyroid carcinoma. Between 1940 and 1960, radiation therapy was occasionally used to shrink enlarged tonsillary and adenoid tissue to treat acne or to reduce an enlarged thymus. 
for people exposed to external radiation in childhood, there appears to be an increased incidence of thyroid cancer five to 40 years after irradiation. There are four types of thyroid cancer. Papillary is the most common, seen in younger women. It's a slow growing cancer, and so the chance for a cure is good with a thyroidectomy. Follicular is the most common in older adults. It invades blood vessels, spreads to bone and lung tissue, and can ad adhere to the trachea, neck muscles, great vessels, and skin, resulting in dysphagia and dyspnea. The hoarse voice is laryngeal involvement that you'll hear. Medullary is the most common in those over 50. It occurs as part of a mul multiple endocrine neoplastic type 2 or familial endocrine disorder. The tumor will secrete calcitonin and uh, steroid hormone ACTH, prostaglandins, and serotonin. And anapla anaplastic simply means they'll cells that no longer resemble their cell of origin. So an anaplastic thyroid cancer would be rapid growing, aggressive tumor that invades nearby tissue, has manifestations that would include stridor, hoarseness, and dysphagia as the trachea is infected with the cancer cells. This slide shows you the projected um, cure or stages based on the stage. And we'll talk about stages of cancer when we talk about cancer in the summer quarter, but essentially stage one is early diagnosis and stage four is not. So as you can see, um, anaplastic carcinoma is probably very deadly and mostly it is found at the end stage, so the, um, in a stage four, so very low, poor prognosis. Radiation therapy is the number one treatment for anaplastic cancer due to the likelihood of metastasis. The word metastasis means spread to surrounding tissues. Several routes are available for administering radi radiation to the thyroid or tissues of the neck, including oral administration of radioactive iodine and external administration of radiation therapy. The patient who receives external sources of radiation is at risk for mucositis, dryness of the mouth, dysphagia, redness of the skin, anorexia, and fatigue. Chemotherapy is infrequently used to treat thyroid cancer. The treatment of choice for thyroid carcinoma is surgical removal. Total or near total thyroidectomy is performed if possible. Modified neck dissection or more extensive radical neck dissection is performed if there is lymph node involvement. Efforts are made to spare parathyroid tissue to reduce the risk of postoperative hypocalcemia and tetany. After surgery, ablation procedures are carried out with radioactive iodine to irradiate residual, residual, residual thyroid tissue if the tumor is radiosensitive. Radioactive iodine also maximizes the chance of discovering thyroid metastasis at a later date if a total body scan is carried out. After surgery, thyroid hormone is administered in suppressive doses to lower the levels of TSH to a stable state. The remaining thyroid tissue is inadequate to produce efficient thyroid hormone. Thyroxin is required permanently. Ablation can be done with the radioactive iodine or laser ablation to totally kill the cells. Follow-up treatment, you want to expect that your patient will be hypothyroid. So require, they will require monitoring of levels and thyroid replacement. Prognosis depends on the degree of disease at the time of diagnosis overall. Their health, ability to follow up on care, and the degree of, or the extensiveness of the disease on diagnosis. Of course, as a nurse, you're going to be most concerned with bleeding issues, some perhaps um, edema at the surgical site. You want to reduce that because you don't want to impede their airway at all. Um, you'll be monitoring blood pressure and pulse for indications of internal bleeding, and then providing IV fluids. 
They may or may not have a trach. Often they do initially. Sometimes they don't. And the trachea is maintained and stable. Um, the intensity of pain must be assessed. And the patient is to talk as little as possible. Even though they are able to talk, they must maintain stability of that area. And so need to be provided with alternative methods.